everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And today I'd like to share with you some outside the box ideas that I created with the contents of the April 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! titled, My Wonderful Family. These monthly kits come straight to my mailbox and contain everything I need to make fun, creative paper crafting cards and projects. This month's kit contains supplies to make eight four and a quarter by five and a half inch fun fold cards that will make it easy for me to share my heart with anyone in my life that feels like family. The box also contains this publication with directions, tips, photos, details about the kit, a link to a how-to video to help guide me in assembling, and I've also got two items in the kit that I can use over and over again even after the consumables from the kit are used up. This mini ink pad and this beautiful exclusive stamp set. A clear block which was included free with my first ever kit for mounting and using my stamps and my scissors are the only extra supplies that I really need to provide. Paper pumpkin kits are just $22 plus tax per month in the US. Shipping is included, you control which months you get your kits, and there's no commitment or obligation. These kits are produced through Stampin' Up! so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using some of these as I share my alternate projects today. You can find the items that I used listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, joining my Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you can see even more alternate project ideas shared daily, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website where I've shared photos of the projects. If you're looking for ideas for past kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com. Click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, then choose Recent or Older Posts. Since March of 2013, when Paper Pumpkin first began, I've been creating and sharing alternate projects so Paper Pumpkin subscribers can see that there's so many more possibilities, so many more options with those kit supplies. And that's what I'll be doing in this video. I'm excited to create with you, so let's get started. I want to point out that I'll be using some different products uh, than what you might expect. I, I take the ink pad and the block that comes in your first kit and um, the adhesives and I substitute in these items. So I have the ergonomic blocks that you can get in the online store. They come in different sizes. I also use the larger ink pad. I use my snail adhesive for being quick. Um, sometimes I use these glue dots instead of these because again they're quicker. But I do love these glue dots for several occasions and um, sometimes I even bring in extra dimensionals because we do sell these in the online store. So just know that you've got enough stuff but you can also get more. <laughs> For those of you that have subscribed with Paper Pumpkin for several months or more, you may have noticed that in recent months, Stampin' Up! has included some alternate project ideas on the back of the publication that comes in each kit. So that's fun for inspiration, isn't it? Um, yay! Now I want to point out that even though this kit comes with fun fold cards, I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to fold these cards to make some other different um, designs. For the first card, the first project that I'm going to make, I'm using um, the scrap from the green branches, the shaded spruce color branches. I'm going to use one of the branches, I'm going to use some of the mint macaron pearls, this card base, and then I'm bringing in mint macaron ink, some um, memento tuxedo black ink, a sponge to use with the mint ink. I'll be bringing in this ribbon which is a sister ribbon of the one that you get with the kit. This is the same style, the same texture of ribbon. Um, this is our mint macaron textile ribbon. And then I'll be of course using the basic tools like the trimmer, snips, um, snail adhesive, and I'll also bring in some basic black cardstock and some mint macaron cardstock. So let's start with the base of our card. I'll just move these things off to the side for a second. We're going to trim off one half inch on the green end of this piece and then we're going to flip it around and we're going to trim off a quarter of an inch on the white end. So we're cutting parallel to the short side of the card. Then you'll notice that there are two score lines within the card. This one here, this one which is a little less dominant but it's in there. We're going to start from this score line and we're going to score 
a half of an inch, a half of an inch, a half of an inch, so that we have, you know, sections going through the card. So I think I'll turn it this way because it's going to be easier to see the measurements going this direction. So if we have the score line here, we're just going to shove this score line over to this half inch mark here. And you'll be able to see on your trimmer that half inch mark actually extends down here too. So we can just follow this mark here and we'll line it up and we'll bring our score blade across. So now we've put another score line one half inch away from the first one. We're going to shove it over just a tad again and again I'm looking at the score or the little marks on my trimmer here and I'm going to go ahead and add another score line a half of an inch away and we'll do that with one more like this. Okay then we're going to flip it around we're going to do the same thing over here so we're going to move this over to this mark, which again, if you look up here, it's the half inch mark on our trimmer. And we'll score, move it over again, and score, and once more. And now we're going to move our trimmer off to the side for just a minute, and I'm going to show you how we're going to fold this card. So let's take these score lines and just bend the side pieces back a little bit like this and then we're going to take the next score line next to it and we're going to bend the opposite way like that so we've kind of made like a little step and we'll do that on each side like that okay so what we're going to do is we're going to make kind of an accordion fold with the other two score lines next to it so we've made like little steps here on each side And there we go. Now here we're going to make another score line, but we're not going to do that until after we've stamped uh, a sentiment, a little verse on our card here. And then it will fold into the envelopes that come in the kit. So let's go ahead and stamp that next. We have lots of different verses that we can use. And I'm going to choose the one that says, I'm, um, I'll always be here for you. And we'll stamp that in the black ink. And we'll grab our C size block mount it kind of diagonally so that we're not relying on the edges of the block for when we place our stamp image down. And I'll bring in the Stamp and Pierce mat. I always forget to use this. <laughs> Let's ink up the stamp and we're going to stamp that down crossing over this little middle area here. Maybe we'll have it up a little bit higher like that. And with the two-tone background, it just gives a nice little area for that sentiment to sit. So now we're going to move our uh, pierce mat out of the way, stamp and pierce mat, and then we're going to bring this into our trimmer so that the um, area where the colors meet, the white and the mint colors meet, is right there in the channel of our trimmer. And we're going to send the score line through there. And that will allow us to fold this portion of the card inward. Now at this point, if you don't have your score line exactly where it should be, for example, I don't know if you can see this here, yeah, it's a little too far, um, too far this way, so that this piece folding in is just a hair too close to here, then what we need to do is just trim off a little bit more and you can do like a sixteenth of an inch or in this case I'm just going to do an eighth of an inch to be safe. And I actually did only trim off a sixteenth of an inch because it's all I needed. So that folds in there really well. And then these little guys will just accordion in like this. And this will fit into my envelope when it's closed. Now we just need to decorate. So we've ha we have that, um, that black paper and that mint paper. So we're going to bring in our extra cardstock. And we're going to trim our black to three-eighths of an inch, three, I'm sorry, three and one-eighths of an inch by four and one-eighth. I think that's the right size. Yes, so that will fit inside this little panel here with about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. And then we're going to take our green, our mint color, and trim that 
to four inches wide by three inches wide. So that will be this layer here. I've also got that extra strip that was on this side here and I've put some adhesive on the back side and that will just go over here as a little decoration piece. I'm not sure if I'm, I might bring it all the way to the edge. Anyways, that's going to go over there somewhere. This piece, as you might have guessed, is going to be sitting right there with a little piece of mint ribbon on there and some pearls decorating it. And then I've even got a strip of this shaded spruce green that I trimmed off from the scraps. And it's just a fourth of an inch thick. And I'm going to add a section here. Now this is where those glue dots from the kit really come in handy because I've already started adding them. Um, they're going to be a lot easier to add onto the back of the strip than taking this adhesive, which is a little bit wider. So I'll just go ahead and add another one there. And one more step I forgot to mention is I'm going to sponge the edges just for a little emphasis around the green here. And that's why I brought that sponge in. It's not necessary, but it's just a fun way to give a little bit more depth to your layers. If you've never sponged before, it's pretty simple. You just take your, your sponge and kind of flick it down like this. Now this is a, a sixth of a circular sponge. I cut mine into wedges and then I just save them in an embroidery floss container before I put it in the container I usually label it with a sharpie marker so that I know what color it is. You can even staple on a section of color so that you can keep track of that. Okay so I've put adhesive on the back side of this strip and we're going to add that here so it's about an eighth of an inch of white showing on the side this piece, we'll just take the backings off of these adhesive dots and that will get added right here a little bit away from that middle section because when you fold it over you don't want that to be bunching up in there. And then these leaves are wide enough where you can just use the snail adhesive, but if you want to, of course, you can use your glue dots in the kit. And there's our finished card. Again, it just folds like this to get it to go into your envelope. Then when the recipient opens the envelope, it'll kind of explode open a little bit and you'll be able to have your sentiment or I'm sorry, your sentiments right there. You can you can sign your card here or you can sign it on the back side if you want this to stay decorative and you don't like your handwriting. <laughs> All right, next project. This next one is another fun fold card using the other card base. I'll also be using these pieces here, maybe two or three of the butterflies, some of the pearls this light um, green um, banner and then this piece that coordinates with it. So let's bring in the trimmer and adjust our cards so that this end is coming in first and this white edge is going up to the one inch mark. I'm going to give that a score, a nice crisp score line and fold that over. And then this piece we're going to actually trim off. So we're going to bring it right to that spot where these two colors meet in the channel. We're going to use our cutting blade and trim that portion of the card away. We're going to make a gift card holder um, type card. So this here is going to form a pocket and it's going to fold inward like this. So I have an experiment first. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this piece yet, if I need to extend the pocket a bit or if I can use it as is. I'd prefer to use it as is. We're going to bring in the bone folder and make this nice and crisp. I think it'll work. I think as long as this is nice and flat, 
I think it's going to work as is, which would be great because I want to use this portion to stamp a sentiment. So we're going to take our tear and tape adhesive, which is a really, really strong adhesive, and just add a couple strips on the end here. If you have any section that goes over the edge a little bit, you can just fold that back over once you've got the backing off. So you can see we just tuck that back onto itself. Okay, and the gift card, you'll notice, will fit into that space without being in the way of the tape. Um, so when we press this down, we want to press it flat. Normally, I, you know, when I instruct on how to make gift card holders, I say put the gift card in there first, but I want this to be super snug. Oh, that works. Super. Okay. So now we can start decorating. We're going to keep this open and we're going to stamp the inside with our Pear Pizzazz ink, the ink color that comes in the kit. And we're going to bring back in that stamp and pierce mat. I have a couple of these. One of them I use my um, piercer and I poke into it and it has holes in it. But this one I keep clean and it's great for using with the photopolymer stamp so you get a nice clear image. So we're going to stamp Happy Mother's Day and we're going to stamp that above our area where the two sections meet here. And I just grabbed a little scrap of paper there so that I had a place to, for that ink to go off onto. And then this will just get tucked in there like that. We're going to decorate the edge here with some leaves that we're going to punch out from this leaf punch. And you can't punch the whole thing out, but we're going to punch a couple at a time. So we're just going to move it down into our punch to get a couple leaves and then a couple more. And these will get glued to the edges here as little decorations coming out. And then we've got this piece and that's going to go in the middle of our card. And yes, you will see it when you close the card. You're going to see a portion of it and that's okay. Um, this is going to receive a branch. Now normally you'd think of this as a tree trunk, but because of the large flowers, because we're going to leave it as is, we're not going to stamp that tree stamp um, this one here. We're not going to stamp this around it. So we're going to make these flowers stay large, um, which means to me it looks like leaves and flowers on a tree branch. Um, and then we're also going to have the butterflies come in there. So it's going to make it look more proportional that way. To get this tree branch on here, instead of using glue dots in the kit, we're going to flip it over and we're going to pounce on some, um, some, some adhesive. And so I'm going to grab another piece of scrap paper here. This is just post-it note paper. We do have, we do have scrap pa paper. <laughs> there, we'll use the one that doesn't have ink on it. And we're going to put a little bit of this glue onto our scrap paper like that. And now we're using another sponge. And this sponge I keep set aside for my multi-purpose uh, liquid glue. And I just pounce into it to pick up some adhesive on the back side go like this, keeping it still. If you move it, it's going to get glue on the front. We don't want that. And we lift it up and we quickly transfer it to where we want it on our project. And it sticks down pretty well. Now this I will then rinse off with warm water before it dries and it'll be clean, fairly clean ready to use the next time I want to use it with my adhesive. There we go. I ended up using four butterflies instead of three, <laughs> so more than I thought. I did curl up the ends of the leaves just slightly using that bone folder and added some pearls to the front. This looks like little um, leaves or, you know, from the tree coming down close up. 
I just thought that was kind of a fun card. All right, next project. I received this um, container of gum a while back and decided to recycle it. I kept it. I thought, you know, it's fairly rectangular. I could do something with this. I noticed that the cardstock for the cards fits in there pretty well. It might have to be trimmed just a little bit, but I thought we could decorate this and have it like a little treat box. So um, I'm going to use this card base and just a portion of it. I'll be using this envelope, although I could use this piece here because it was trimmed off my last card. But since I'm using this card base, we'll just sacrifice the envelope. I'll use a label. I'm going to use some of the pink ribbon. And in, in that case, we're also going to bring in the coordinating ink color, Melon Mambo. I'll be using that along with our leaf punch. And we're also going to use some really strong glue dots for this. So let's start off. Let's just cut a little branch piece out of here. Let's start off by cutting the base. Okay. We're going to go ahead and trim this right before this score line. So you have a score line here, but you want you don't want to ever cut directly on a score line because you can sometimes, especially if your blade isn't really sharp, get these little jagged edges. So we're going to cut right before it so the score line is intact still. And then we're going to trim this up just a tad. So what I did is I opened up my container, I stuck this in here, and I said, oh, it's, it's going to bend a little bit. So we're going to trim off, I don't know, let's see. So let's lay it over the top, about a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch. Let's start with a sixteenth of an inch. And then I stuck it in there again. I said, that's pretty good, although it's still kind of bending a bit. It does go right to the edges though, so if I trim it off too much more, how much is going to show? So I think I'm going to stick with that and maybe just kind of curve in a bit with my, with my snips, my paper snips. So let's score now where these two colors meet. And then we just need to measure the bottom. And you probably want to measure it not at its widest point, but at its narrowest point. And so I'm thinking an inch and I'm sorry, a half an inch plus uh, another sixteenth. So we're just going to move this over one half inch plus another sixteenth, which is three sixteenths before the three inch mark here, or two and three, thirteen sixteenths. So let's fit this in here and see how that looks. Okay, it's pretty snug. We can't get it all the way in. So again, we could either curve in or I think what I'm going to do, because it's going to be too fancy to do that, is we're just going to trim off another sixteenth of an inch. And we'll go every sixteenth of an inch if we need to do any more. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect. So now we have our cute little liner in there. And so you can put a gift in there and nobody will see it. Let's decorate that up a bit. And you could put this on the outside if you wanted to, like that. We'd be able to add, um, you know, something dimensional like a pearl, or we could even add it to the inside right here. And then that would protect our sentiment piece that we're putting on there. I think that's what we'll do. So let's take our Melon Mambo ink and our stamp that says to my wonderful and we're going to mask the word wonderful just going to use some post-it note paper here and cover up the word wonderful so that when we ink this we won't get any ink on that part of the stamp so we'll just ink it up like this take that off move it out of the way And then we're going to stamp the word sister. I have a wonderful sister. All right. This will get added to this spot here. We'll just do that with some small adhesive because it's super quick. And before we put that down, oops, we almost forgot, we're going to add the branch underneath. We'll just stick that on there like that and then add a little bit more adhesive to the back side. In fact, you can put a little bit on the leaves too. So 
since this is going to be flat down in our container. You'll notice I have it kind of off to the edge here. That's because I am going to trim it. Then this can get closed here. We'll tie another one of those rabbit ear kind of bows. So two rabbit ears, cross them over. And that will go on the inside like that. The gift can go in there. You can snap this shut. Make sure that the gift is low enough where it's not going to um, get in the way of that pretty bow on the inside there. Everything's protected. And if it doesn't matter to you if things are protected, like you're not packing this in a suitcase or something like that, then you can instead get a little fancier. So you can add the pearls, you can add some fun little embellishments that stick out. And I've moved the ribbon from the inside to the outside so that it kind of moves with the cover when you open it up. It allows you to get more stuff in there too. decorating treat containers um, and jars might become an addictive thing for you. <laughs> this one would be great to put honey into or a favorite jam or jelly, um, which my dad loves, so I think that's what I'm going to need to do with this one. And if you don't have little treat containers that you've been saving to recycle, you can always get containers um, on the, in the online store from Stampin' Up! This is one of my favorites. It's the little copper tins that we sell. And you can put a lot of stuff in them. It's amazing. So I wrapped some of that mint macaron um, textile ribbon around here. And these rhinestones are actually pre-colored. They come from our holiday rhinestone basic jewel collection. Some of these colors in here work really well. I know that they're not the exact same colors, but they coordinate really well with this kit. Uh, I just, as you could see, I added um, the leaves with the glue dots, uh, the stronger glue dots that you can get in the online store. And you could take one of these tags and just hang on to it with your container like this, and then when you're ready to give it to somebody, you can write in handwriting, in cursive or whatever, um, what you want to say here, who it's from or whatever. It could be a personalized tag that way. And so, yeah. All right, last project coming up. The last project that I have for you is scrapbooking. And when I opened this kit, it totally reminded me right away of our Garden Lane Designer Series paper. I don't have much of it left, so I can't show it all to you, but it's double-sided paper that has different greens in there. Um, and it just it's kind of that same compilation of lots of greens. I'll also be bringing in the soft sea foam cardstock, some early espresso cardstock, the early espresso ink pad, and some dyes. These are our hand lettered prose dyes for a title. Although you could come up with lots of different title pieces from this kit because there's some great you know, sentiments in here, some words, and this piece alone would be a great centerpiece for a page to kind of title your page with. So anyways, love, love, love this kit for scrapbooking family. Well, let's start by, die, or by cutting this piece here into a perfect square. So right now our cardstock is eight and a half by 11. And we're going to cut it to eight and a half by eight and a half. That leaves us with this strip. This strip we're going to use for die cutting our letters. So we'll set that off to the side. This piece is going to be sort of crooked on the page. It's going to look like this. And we're going to put a piece down here with the family tree look, well, not a family tree, but a tree um, that kind of represents family, right? And then we'll, we'll put our title uh, letters across the bottom next to it. We're going to be bringing in those branches, uh, these branches here. But because that green is not used much in this page, we're going to use the white side of it. 
And we're going to use, of course, some of the butterflies. This is going to be where we place our tree. We'll have one of the banner pieces from the kit. We'll be using the pear pizzazz ink to help build the tree. And I don't know what else I'll grab. <laughs> So now let's take and think about the measurements here. I want to put some square photo mats inside this piece here. And I also want to show the border of the brown paper, the early espresso paper. So if we're going to have an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, and an eighth of an inch for borders in between and on the sides of our photos, that means that we need to have eight and a eight and an eighth. We need to take off three eighths of an inch so that would leave us with eight and an eighth, which means that our photos would be just over the four inch mark. So let's grab our soft seafoam paper and let's cut that to just over, which would be four and a sixteen. I've already cut this. This is from a scrap, so it's not the perfect eight and a half by eleven size to start with. Sorry about that. But if we cut four that are this size, then we should have the perfect photo mats ready to go. So I have my letters cut, ready to go. Now I'm going to use that large bush or half circle stamp and we're going to try to line these up with the images that are already um, on there. Did you notice that, that they actually line up? It's pretty crazy. I love kind of positioning where my pieces are going to go before I finish a project and then comparing that to my finished project sometimes it's completely different as this one is turning out to be. I decided not to angle this main square area and I took these branches that were up there and decided to put them down um, in the lower right and the upper left so that I had more room for photos. In fact I could probably even place a photo here or I could do my journaling there. Um, everything's raised up with dimensionals because this paper has a very busy background to it. So I found that when I had it flat on the paper, it kind of got washed out or hidden. And with raising it up on dimensionals, there's that shadow underneath it, so it's really helping. Also, when you tuck these pieces under, so I don't have dimensionals, I don't have a dimensional under this corner. Um, I just have it here and here, here and here, here and here, here and here, so that I can slip these pieces in the corners. So when I slipped this one underneath, I was like, oh, I don't need that extra leaf. I'm going to cut that off because I could insert it somewhere else. I could make this branch look a lot different just by placing an extra leaf there instead of where it was originally. And that way the two branches won't look the same. These little butterflies I'm going to have sticking off the branches too, and I thought I would have one down here. And so I'm just going to continue to stick everything down before I actually hit, you know, record on this, uh, on this section of the video. I did have these in a totally different place too, and I put them up here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down using the multi-purpose liquid glue and my sponge. And I only want to stick adhesive on the top part of the Y because the other part is going to hang down off the edge. Okay. 
So I added some rhinestones in the tree to make it look more like a pear tree or something, I don't know. Um, I left a few of the yellow dots in there already so that they looked further back and these look closer up. And then I also didn't always overlap the ones that were already printed on the paper. I just put a couple wherever I wanted. The butterfly wings, I sort of curled up with the bone folder just to give that more dimension, just in case you're going to put this in one of those shadow box type displays uh, on the wall in a frame or something. But they will flatten out once you have them in page protectors for your scrapbooking. I hope you enjoyed this page. Um, by the way, ignore the fact that my Y is crooked. <laughs> now that you've watched my video, I hope that you can see that there's so much more to these kits than meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more with these super affordable kits. I hope that you gain some inspiration from what I've shared. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more paper pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other paper pumpkin kit ideas in future and past posts, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. You'll find my direct website link in my description below. If you want to get spoiled with extra goodies, gifts, prizes, and extra exclusive paper pumpkin project ideas, remember to get your subscription started with me as your demonstrator, Rachel Tessman in Andover, Minnesota. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.